Hi, this is Craig Roland. I'm the founder of Sandfly Security. Today, we're going to do a demonstration of Linux stealth rootkit detection using Sandfly. And we're going to begin the process by basically talking a little bit about what a loadable kernel module stealth rootkit on Linux is. This is basically on the scale of zero to pretty bad. This is getting up towards the pretty bad range in terms of Linux exploitation. The Linux stealth rootkits today are designed to be loadable kernel module based, which basically means they're not going to run in the user land area. They are going to go ahead and load themselves into memory and hook a bunch of system calls in order to hide their presence. So they could be hard to detect for uh, casual observation, but like a lot of these attacks, if you go looking for them, they can be easy to spot if you know what to do. In the case here with Today's demonstration, there are a variety of these rootkits out there. Uh, I'm going to use one today called Reptile. Uh, Reptile is a very easy to use rootkit and includes also a, a pretty nice backdoor. The backdoor that comes with it has ICMP, TCP, and UDP tunnels. It's also a stealth backdoor, meaning uh, it, it has a port knocking capability, so you need to send a specially crafted packet to the back door and then it will do a reverse bind shell back to you. And it works pretty well, and that's also hidden by this rootkit once it's loaded. Now I did a preliminary install of the rootkit here just to kind of get it up and going so I could show you before and after. Here we are on the standard directory here. You can see I just have a standard reptile kit here. If I do a listing of the root directory, we are going to see it creates this directory here called reptile. And the way this rootkit works is any directory that has this reptile prefix, when the rootkit is active, you are not going to see that listed anymore and all the contents in that directory are going to be hidden. So in this case here, Reptile has all the goodies in order to hide you. It has an ability to switch you to root with this command. It has a start. It also has um, the program here to do the port knock and it has the heavens door which is the back door that I told you about. Okay, at this Some point the Reptile rootkit is running and installed on this system. I showed you before we have that directory at the top level. Now if I uh, go ahead and list that top level directory. You can see here there's no reptile between proc and root. It's gone. But that directory is in fact there. You can see here I can switch into it. It's not going to show me anything in the contents of that directory, but those hidden binaries that were in there before, they still are here if you know what to do to run them. Now the reptile kit has the ability to hide itself from standard commands in order to see that it's there. In this case, we are going to do an ls mod, and I could see here, just looking through, there's nothing that's really standing out to me. But if you enter a special kill, kill-50 to zero, we do that ls mod again. All of a sudden now we see our little friend popping up here. So that's the reptile module that we can make it blink in and out of existence very quickly with just a quick kill command. And there, again, it's gone. So that's one of the ways that it hides. But a few things that do start to stand out if we start looking for them, uh, one is going to be, uh, we'll do this command here, netstat NALP. So we're going to look, look here, we're going to see a few things. We got the standard SSHD commands that are running, a DHCP client running up here, but now we got these three things here which are very odd. They're, first of all, they're opening up a raw port that you could see here. I could see that they're listening on uh, TCP, UDP, and also UDP protocol ports here. They're listening for everything, and there's no PID name being shown. That's very, very suspicious. Most processes here, you would see the process ID and the program name associated with it, but something has gone ahead and hidden these from view. So this is one thing here that I would say as a system administrator, I'd be on the lookout for. But again, it's very easy to miss. I mean, a casual view, this would just flow by. You might not pay any attention to it whatsoever. So you'd have a hard time seeing that this was there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use Sandfly to go ahead and scan these systems to see if there's going to detect any problems. And the way this is going to work, essentially Sandfly is running all the time. If this kind of rootkit was loaded up, you would eventually get an alert from Sandfly that there's something going on in this host that's going to be needing to be have attention paid to it. And we're going to go through that process right now of what Sandfly is actually going to show you in terms of a Linux stealth rootkit. All right, so now we're at the Sandfly console, and the way you're going to get an alert with Sandfly usually be through email or maybe syslog output. All the syslog events that we send out have the same rich structured data that you're going to get in the UI. So if you're monitoring this through uh, your own 
independent event monitor or log monitoring system, you're going to see the same thing as you would see here in the UI. But basically, you're going to log in here and you can see this is red. And red indicates a serious problem. Uh, Sandfly is written that you're going to have very, very low chances of false alarms because we're looking for specific signs of compromise. And what I mean by that is the signatures are designed to be very specific in what we're looking for that almost always indicate that there's a problem on the host. In this case here, this host is showing us with 10 alerts on it. Now these 10 alerts are going to be stacked up in a way that's going to be basically the layers of the attack that we saw. Now what you need to remember with Sandfly is we're not specifically trying to flag, again, the FUBAR variant 23C subsection 2A attack. It's not really how it works. We instead want to get off what we call the hamster wheel of signature updates. Okay, there's so many ways for an attacker to change their code, even in the slightest bit, to make a signature not work in terms of cryptographic hashes and things like that. Instead, what we do, we look for the building blocks of an attack. So what you're seeing here, even though I'm using the Reptile Rootkit to demonstrate it, this actually works against most of the Linux Stealth Rootkits that are out there in terms of showing you that there's a problem on the system. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you kind of some of the elements that make these rootkits detectable. In this case here, what we could say is very simple. We can look at the file system and compare it against what the kernel is saying there versus what we think is there. If we see any type of discrepancy, we can then say well, there's something in this directory that is trying to hide from us. What we're showing in this case is that we could see in the proc directory here, which is a Linux, uh, special Linux system directory for basically kernel process information and everything else going on, we could say that there's something in there that's hiding from us. Again, we don't know what it is, what's causing it, but we do know that there's something there that's trying to say, hey, I'm not actually present, but, but uh, we do know that they are. Same thing here in the lib directory. We're going through here and we see a couple of things that are really odd. Under lib modules, kernel drivers, pulse audio. The pulse audio, that's a weird directory. This is a virtual machine. It doesn't have an audio card in it. So again, that's kind of weird that it's there. But again, we can go down here and we can see that this has a, a link count of three, but the directory listing is showing zero directories, which means that at least one or more are hiding from us in this directory. That means we're definitely going to want to go take a look at what's going on here. We see this directory here for a different version of the kernel. Again, same thing. We got this weird pulse audio. We again see that something is in there hiding from us. Now, what's also good about this information is up here, you're going to get the creation time of that directory showed up. This would be a really good time to start trying to bracket a time window for when this system might have been broken into. So now you're starting to get clues about when you can start looking on this host for when a problem actually happened. Now aside from file system inconsistencies, we can also look at network socket inconsistencies. In this case here, I showed you that rootkit had loaded up a pretty nice backdoor that um, was able to hide once the loadable kernel module was put into place. But we do see, in this case here, IP protocol UDP raw sockets, that there's something listening and has been hidden from us. Same thing here, we see the TCP protocol raw sockets, something hiding, and again, ICMP raw sockets, there's something hiding from us. Again, we don't know what hit it, we just know that there's something there that is trying to hide its presence from being spotted. Finally, in that top directory, I showed you the reptile directory that had all the goodies hidden. Well, in this case here, again, we see that there's the file system inconsistency that's telling us, hey, there's something there that's hiding from us that we think you're going to want to take a look into. On top of it all, we do have a generic signature that looks for generic signs of Linux rootkits. That's not really the main focus of Sandfly. It's really something we put in there because customers were asking for it. But the main thing Sandfly focuses on is these generic building blocks here, something hiding from us. In this case here, we're showing you something hiding from the file system and telling the kernel to tell us it's not there even though we know it is. Something here that's also telling us, hey, there's some network activity that's trying to hide from us. That's really the essence of what Sandfly is trying to do. We have enough information now at this this point to say we need to nuke this system from orbit okay we don't know how it was broken into you could send down the incident response groups they try to piece back together what's going on but we do know that this system almost certainly has a problem if you need to capture this data you're going to want to boot it up in single user mode make sure no kernel modules were loaded and try to find what these hidden directories were and figure it out from there but at least you got a warning that there's something going on and that's something that you really can't do with this manual review. It's very difficult with these loadable kernel module stealth kits to find this stuff manually. You have to be very meticulous about what you're looking for, but Sandfly makes the process very, very easy. 
So if you enjoyed this demo, realize that Samfly can detect a lot of things, loadable kernel module stealth kits, regular stealth kits, pieces of malware, generic hacking activity as well on your Linux host. Check out our website at samflysecurity.com. You can get a free trial version of the product there. Also check out our other videos. We'll be covering more forensics topics dealing with Linux. My name is Craig Rowland. I appreciate you watching this video. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon.